So today uh, we are going to study a very important portion of the the great antiquary system. So I request everybody to please open the Bibles. So keep a notebook with along with you and uh, keep also a pen because we need to calculate some important things or so. Uh, we are going to see triple six today. So uh, attentively please listen. So uh, we are going to understand very important things, sir. So dear brother. Ah. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I think uh, Sister Roshni has also joined. Let's welcome her. Oh, Roshni, Sister and Kamal brother, welcome. How are you? Thank you, brother. We are fine. And you? Fine, sir. By God's grace, we are going on. How is brother? Jai Masih, brother. Ah, Jai Masih, Kamal brother. Jai Masih, Jai Masih. Good, good. Okay. Uh, good. So we'll continue the class. So today is a very important class about Antichrist. So we're going to uh, study uh, about triple six today. So I request everybody to please concentrate. If in the end, if you have any doubts, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. We will definitely discuss all these questions. Okay. So as informed last week, we are going to study uh, the book of Daniel seven chapter because in Daniel seven chapter. the details of uh, the great antiquary system is given there very clearly to us so let us read uh, daniel 7 chapter uh, verse 2 and 3 but uh, before reading that verse uh, i hope that you all remember this class uh, which we took in the initial stages uh, we see daniel 7 chapter uh, where we see the four universal empires uh, uh, pictured in a, a four wild beast so now let us read daniel 7 chapter verse 2 and 3 Daniel spake and said, "I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven, which drove upon the great sea, and the four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another." Very good. So here you see that uh, Daniel is shown a vision where uh, the winds of the heaven uh, is struck upon the great sea, and uh, four animals uh, came out of the sea, which were totally different from one uh, altogether. So let us see how was the first beast. Uh, Daniel seven chapter fourth verse. Uh, Joel Buddar, can you read? The first was like a lion, and had eagles' wings. I beheld, I beheld, till the wings there thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth. and made stand upon the feet as a man and a man's heart was given to it so here you see uh, the first uh, animal was like a lion it had a eagle's wing and how was the second animal daniel 7 5 munna sister can you read and behold another beast a second like to a bear and it raised up its on uh, one side and it had three ribs in in the mouth of it between the teeth of it and this said thus unto it arise devour much flesh so here uh, you see the second beast was like a bear and uh, one of his shoulders was lifted uh, other was a uh, little bit let down and uh, it had three ribs uh, in his mouth this is the second beast and the third beast Read verse six. Uh, Kamal brother or uh, Roshni sister, can you read Daniel seven six? Hmm. Roshni sister, you there? Yes, brother. Uh, after this, after this, I beheld and lo, another. Like a leopard, which had upon the back of it uh, four wings of a four, the beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. Ah, very good, sir. Thank you. So, yeah, the third beast was like a leopard, which had, uh, you see, four wings of a fowl. It was a bird, and it had four heads. Sir. The fourth beast is given is uh, 
Daniel 7, chapter verse 7 and 8. Anil, brother, can you read, brother? Uh, Anil, brother? Okay. Okay, brother. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horn plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth is speaking great things. Very good, brother. So here the first beast was different from all the other beasts. And no name was given to this beast. It was called as a ferocious beast. And the specialty of this beast was that it had uh, 10 horns upon the head. None of the beasts uh, before this had uh, horns on the head. So, and uh, as Daniel was seeing, the three horns were plucked off uh, by the roots. And as it was plucked off, a little horn came in between them. And the speciality of the little horn was that it had a, a mouth of a man and the eyes of a man. And uh, it spoke boastful words. Uh, okay. Now, as we all know that we have studied in the basic class, uh, so this uh, uh, four uh, beast represents the four universal empire. The first one is Babylon. The second one is Medo-Persia. The third one is Greece. And the fourth one is Rome. So here uh, we see that uh, uh, fourth beast had uh, ten horns upon his head. And uh, one of the horn, the little horn came in between them because of which uh, the three horns were plucked out. Uh, so the ten horns uh, represents uh, ten uh, nations in the United Kingdom today. And uh, today even those, uh, you see, the horns are still existing. But you will see that uh, the three horns fell, uh, it seems. Uh, what does it mean? Let us read Daniel 7.24. Uh, Romy's sister, can you read Daniel 7.24? And the ten horn, horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. Very good, Dust. Thank you. So here uh, you see that. Uh, the ten horns are the ten kings. So for the Bible, Bible is a dictionary. So ten horns represents the ten kings. And the little horn that came also represents a king. We'll just shortly see. And because of which, three horns were plucked out by the roots. That means the three, you see, the small, small you see, kings were uprooted totally. If you see in the history, Roman history, these nations are heroly. Eastern Exarchate and Ostrogoths, they were completely rooted. You see, giving way for the papacy to develop. So the little horn represents the papacy. You see, the mixture of a Roman and the Catholic church called as the papacy. So what did the little horn do? It had the eyes of a man and the mouth speaking boastful things. Now what did it do? Verse 25. Uh, Gopal brother, can you read verse 25 brother? And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time, at the end times and the dividing of time. Very good. So here it says, he shall speak great words against the Most High. So with the mouth, with the boastful mouth, what did the papacy system do? If you see, it spoke great things against the Lord God Almighty. And uh, what did it do? It says, uh, he shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Second thing, 
The third thing is that he shall think to change the times and laws. This is the three things that were done by the little on the papacy system. See, dear brethren, this is what Apostle Paul tells when he speaks about the great Antichrist system. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 4, he said, Where he shall exalt himself above all that is called as God, or that is worshipped. So he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So he will sit in the temple of God as God. Temple of God means what? In the church, he will sit as God and be God's representative. That is what clearly Daniel mentions in 725, that he will speak great things and pompous things against the Most High. So dear brethren, see, what all the things uh, the Pope did, uh, the paper system uh, did was uh, the first thing which was very, very, you see, not satisfactory to God is that. Uh... So there, if you see, you see the idol worship. So dear brethren, the Bible clearly says uh, that uh, idol worship is forbidden. You see, even the Ten Commandments are very clear, very clearly says that uh, you see, uh, you should not have any other idol apart from, uh, you see, uh, you should not have any other uh, idol, let it be on earth, on sky or anything. But uh, the great paper system, you see, the great uh, Catholic system that changed the entire Ten Commandments. Uh, you see, they took off the Second Commandment. Uh, so, what did they do? They took out the Fourth Commandment also. So, in the Ten, if two goes, how much is left over? Uh? You see, dear brethren, so only the, you see, eight comments are there. So, people will question them, no? Actually, Moses was given ten, how come only eight are there? So, what did they do is that they changed the fourth commandment uh, instead of putting the word Sabbat, they removed the word Sabbat and uh, they totally removed the second commandment and broke the tenth commandment into two. So, totally how this is how the Ten Commandments are uh, given uh, in the, you see, Catholics. Uh, if you have any Catholic friends, uh, you see, you can ask them. Just tell me the Ten Commandments immediately. They recite the Ten Commandments because from childhood they will be given the training. But they won't speak the Second Commandment which clearly says you shall not make uh, any idol for yourself. That uh, commandment itself uh, was totally taken down. Dear brethren, and Pope, you see, no, huh? So, Pope clearly, you see, you can see in this video, he confesses that uh, he clearly knows uh, that uh, all these things are wrong, which are done by, by the great uh, Catholic system. You see, he clearly acknowledges uh, that how the 10th commandment uh, was broken into two and how the commandment of idol worship uh, was totally repressed uh, to deceive uh, the people. You see... That is the reason Daniel clearly says uh, that, uh, you see, he shall speak uh, pompous things, uh, you see, great words against the Most High, and he shall think to change the laws, uh, you see, and uh, times, uh, that means, dear brethren, so total Bible, you see, and the truth in the Bible was completely mani manipulated. See, he clearly acknowledges the man of sin that is recorded in the uh, book of the Bible, you see, and in the Daniel, it is none other than the great uh, paper system. So, <clears throat> what they did was that, uh, you see, building, uh, you see, pilgrimage, uh, you see, spots. Uh, like uh, in India, we have Pota and Velangani, where there are uh, huge uh, churches built, uh, and where uh, even the people give up their uh, hairs uh, to God, uh, as they do it in other uh, religion. You see, and uh, there is a custom among uh, the Christians that at least once in the lifetime, they need to go to Rome. Because once they go to Rome, what will become? They become very holy. So these are all the things uh, which are not written in the scriptures. They were changed. What did uh, you see God uh, uh, tell in the Bible? See, once Jesus met a Samaritan woman and a uh, Samaritan woman told a uh, hey, day will come, you see, that uh, we need to go to the mountain, you see, and uh, uh, worship God in the mountain. Why? Because uh, in the mountain was that uh, uh, God appeared to Moses. So everybody had thought that God is living in a high place. So if we need to go and worship God, we need to go to the high place. Uh, it's a particular place of worship. But what did Jesus say? A time will come, you see, that there is no need for you to go and worship God anywhere. 
but you god is a spirit and he that worships him should worship in spirit and in truth dear brethren you see and other, other things that were changed was the great uh, merry christmas you see the great xmas the great christmas uh, which is not there in the bible at all uh, you see we clearly saw a few days before how jesus was not born on december 25th you see jesus was actually born 6 six, six months before you see april uh, uh, that means the month uh, in which he was crucified so 6 months before it will come somewhere around september last week or october first week uh, and nowhere does it come to christmas this one also is a <clears throat> unscriptural method of uh, understanding the bible and uh, the christmas star the santa claus the christmas tree all these things are uh, not there in the bible at all <coughs> and god clearly warned not to follow the way of the heathens next uh, is good friday you see we have uh, studied uh, about the lord's uh, memorial supper isn't it so when do we need to take the lord's memorial supper how many times <coughs> you see only once a year and that is the time when jesus actually died on the cross when jesus died on the cross it was a friday but every year it doesn't actually falls on a friday the day changes but here you see the christians they held on to that particular day instead of that particular date so what happens that every year it comes good friday good friday good friday you see and <clears throat> moreover the conducting of the lord's memorial supper every week every monthly ones uh, some people take it uh, every day this one also we saw that how they changed the laws uh, you see the times and seasons uh, and easter i mean the bible speak about easter not even one word about easter comes in the bible it appears only one time in acts 12:4 that to in kjv version that is actually a wrong translation about the word passover the word actually that should be there on the word passover and easter eggs is never given in the bible and uh, all saints day we all know november 1st uh, is uh, recognized as all saints day where uh, in the churches uh, all the relics uh, the cloths the pens the books uh, what all uh, they used uh, they're all uh, kept in uh, the churches uh, so anybody touches those holy things uh, they will become uh, you see holy so this concept also which none of the apostles followed was completely implemented uh, in the churches uh, next uh, november 2nd is the all souls day what happens to the soul if man dies uh, you see the soul also dies but uh, this main important doctrine was totally changed uh, you see and uh, the theory came that a soul as soon as a man dies goes to hell and heaven then next uh, saint mary's feast you see if you go to europe during the month of september you see and the month of august last week it's a great celebration you see mary's feast means all the people will come to the church you see where does jesus say that you should worship mary you see clearly says women my time is not yet come so apart from this let uh, many more things they do uh, you see confession do what all sin you want uh, and go and confess it to the father all your sins will be you see forgiven and uh, during those days indulgences were sold that means for each and every sin each and every token was supposed to be purchased if somebody does a robbery 10 rupees uh, if you give uh, to the you see treasury what will happen the soul will just be transferred from hell to heaven so this was the you see concept and because of that indulgences only today the entire vatican city is built and rosary keep on doing rosary huh? you see novena reading the same thing again and again you see the brain so fasting and prayer which are all totally you see not there in the bible where changed the so reason he says they say they shall try to change the laws and they shall persecute the saints of the most high dear brethren the bible was in dead latin language anybody who try to translate the bible was burnt at stake you see alive they were tied to the pillar you see and they were burnt alive so that others might see and fear that nobody should speak to the pope or spoke against the pope also and uh, 
During those days, uh, they made a holy inquisition. What is it, the holy inquisition? If you see the this is a holy inquiry, door to door, as we do census today in our nation, in our country. Similarly, during those days, Pope made a compulsory inquiry of all those. You see, the representatives of the Pope, the cardinals, the bishop used to go to each and every house and ask. What is the belief regarding the doctrines which the Pope preached? And if people confesses, yes, we agree to it, they were let alive or else they were, you see, brutally, you see, punished and they were persecuted severely. Sometimes even their own children were taken alive in front of them. They were smashed to the rocks. Then And they did this one and quoted the scriptures. Because in Psalms, a verse says, Blessed is the man who smites his uh, children to the rock. That's got a different uh, thing, meaning altogether. But these people, they took it literally and persecuted the Christians. You see, and uh, whoever uh, did not confess uh, to agree to the Pope, they used to be tortured uh, in these various ways. Uh, you see, their hands and legs were totally changed and they were allowed to survive in great dark dungeons. You see, their mouth were stitched, their tongues were plucked out, you see, and their, uh, they were nailed, their eyes were plucked out. And uh, for some people, you see, they used to pour hot tar yeah, on in wherever the holes were in the body, in those places, hot tar, you see, uh, they were poured and uh, the skin was totally peeled. They were still alive. Imagine, they, the people used to never die. You see, the torture was so severe, but yet, uh, you know, they did not allow the people to die. So they tortured them, they plucked out their nails, uh, all these various things and all the other. And, and sometimes, uh, you know, they, their body was totally lifted up. How, if you see, the hands were cuffed off in the back. Uh, and uh, from the back, uh, they used to lift the body. And, uh, and for the feet, they used to tie heavy uh, weights uh, so that, uh, you know, uh, because of the jerk, uh, all their bones uh, were supposed to be dismantled and they were, uh, you see, uh, allowed to be bitten by rats, uh, rodents, uh, you see, various things. And uh, whenever they used to give uh, torture, uh, <clears throat> the bishop, the pope used to be uh, next to them and they had to confess uh, uh, that the pope was right. And... Uh, Along with them, a doctor was always uh, a standby because the doctor's duty was to check uh, if the person is really dying or not. Uh, and uh, uh, if a doctor tells that, oh, you, sh you will surely die uh, within a few moments, uh, they would immediately stop the torture and uh, give them treatment uh, so the patient may recover. And once uh, he gets recovered, again, they used to, you see, torture. Uh, the so what all I am telling is not a really fake thing. It's not a real thing. You can even search in a discovery channel. Very detailedly, all these things uh, are being given. Various uh, torture equipments uh, were invented, were found during uh, this uh, papacy time. This period is called as dark ages in the Bible. Dear brethren, <clears throat> these things are existing today, even, you see, in England. If you go to England, the Bible Society there is the oldest torture room. That torture room today, you know, is converted into a Bible museum and a Bible uh, society in England, dear brethren. So, in the name of Christ, uh, many of the Christians who opposed uh, the teachings of Pope, you see, the hell, uh, the soul, uh, trinity, they were persecuted, uh, you see, and uh, blood run uh, all over the city, dear brethren. Therefore, uh, it says, uh, ye shall wear out the saints uh, of the uh, most high, he shall think to change, you see, uh, the times and the laws, dear brethren. You see, <clears throat> and uh, uh, a person was uh, appointed for uh, these things to oversee all these things, uh, how people are tortured. And uh, this report was given to the Pope. And he was uh, beatified as a saint because of his very holy work, they all thought that this is a, you see, a holy work and uh, they gave him various titles and uh, 
you see, gave him a good uh, status in the society also. Saint Dominic, uh, he was named. Uh, you see, but uh, lakhs of lakhs of people, dear brethren, you see, they were crucified, uh, they were tortured, killed. The blood ran on the roads of France, uh, uh, Italy, Germany, you see, dear brethren. So, all these things, uh, actually, Christians did for Christians. Not that uh, Christians were persecuted by Gentiles, dear brethren. See, the Christians were persecuted by the Christians themselves uh, because of standing against the wrong doctrines. But all teachings, what we are teaching today, you see, was completely corrupted, was completely wiped off. You see, the concept of ransom, the concept of three worlds, the concept of uh, God's kingdom on earth, uh, the entire thing was taken out of the And that is the time that, uh, you see, the laws and times were changed, uh, dear brethren. And, uh, you see, <coughs> Pope, uh, uh, recently, the Pope who actually died before this one, he actually, you see, apologized for uh, all these uh, mistakes uh, which the great uh, Roman Catholic system did. Uh, and he confessed uh, that uh, all these persecutions did in the name of uh, Christ uh, was uh, wrong. And many of the Christians uh, who died during those days, the brethren, the song... Uh, you see, uh, many of the, the songs they sang, actually, which uh, are used today in the churches, uh, like, uh, you see, All to Jesus I surrender. You see, those songs were uh, sung by the people during the dying moments, dear brethren. So, dear brethren, so what is the time that uh, God permitted uh, them to do all these things. So what is the time that God gave for the Antichrist? Uh, you see, that is also given in Daniel 7.25. You see, we saw that he spoke great words against the Most High. How he spoke against God, against uh, the scriptures. And we also saw how we shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change the times and laws. Uh, we also saw how we thought to change... Christmas, Easter, Lord's Supper, all those things which are unscriptural. But this verse also says they should be given for a particular time. Now, what is that time? Uh, Joel, Buddha, read Daniel 7.25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times, times and I times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. See, they shall be given, God's children shall be given to the hands of the papacy for a particular time it seems. It says time, times and half a time. Now what is this time, times and half a time? Kindly read in Nepali Bible. Let us see how does it come in Nepali. Daniel 725. Can anybody read in Nepali? I'll read, brother. Anitisle Param Pradhan ko virodma tula tula kura aru bolne cha ra Param Pradhan ka pavitra zon aru lai ragit ne cha Anitisle samay ra bebasta bati garne bichar garne cha ani Uniharu samay samay haru samay samay haru ra aadha samay samat isko haath ma sumpi ne cha. Very good. Samay, 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 aadha samay. Correct, no? So it means time, yeah. times and half a times. So if you see, that means actually three and a half times. Okay. Now what is the meaning of three and a half times? You see, actually it is speaking about three and a half years. The same period is given to us again in the book of Revelation. Revelation 12 chapter verse 6, Revelation 12 chapter verse 14, and Revelation 13 chapter verse 5. But in these verses, the same period is mentioned in three different angles. One verse speaks about the same time in years. Other works speaks about the same time in months. And also it speaks about the same time in days. So let us read the verses. Uh, Gopal brother, can you read all these three verses? Daniel 12, oh, sorry, Revelation 12, 14 first. Read Revelation 12, 14 first. Uh, 
Revelation 12, 14, and to the women were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Very good. So here also it's given a period of a time, times and half a time. So three and a half times. Okay. Now, at the same period is mentioned in verse 6 in the days. Read with the verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Okay. Thousand two hundred and three score days. So thousand two hundred and sixty days. Now let us read about months in Revelation 13 5. The... <clears throat> and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. Mm, 40 and 2 months. Now let us cross check whether all speaks about the same period or not. You see, actually in the Bible, each month has 30 days. So, in a month, there are 30 days as per the biblical calendar. So, biblical calendar is neither the solar calendar, neither is the lunar calendar. Okay? So, kindly remember, Lunar calendar has 354 and two-third day. Solar calendar has 365 and a quarter day per year. But this biblical calendar is totally different. This is the average of the both. So, biblical calendar has 30 days a month. So, in a year, 12 months, so 12 months into 30 days would bring us to 360 days per year. Okay. Now, 360 days into three and a half years, how many days will you get it? Can somebody calculate and tell me? 360 days into three and a half years, how much it will come? Now, who will tell me first? <coughs> hmm? 1260. Very good, brother. So, 360 days into three and a half years means it will come to 1260 days. Now, let us cross check whether our calculation is correct or not. Okay. How do we calculate this 1260 days? Let us divide it by 42 months. So, how much will get? Can somebody do it and tell me? 1260 days divided by 42 months. Three and a half years means 42 months. So, let us divide and see how much we'll get. Thirty, thirty days. Good, thirty days. So this clearly proves that our calculation is right. That means the same thing is mentioned in years, same thing is mentioned in months, same thing is mentioned in days. So thousand two sixty days is is equal to three and a half years. Is is equal to forty two months. No, okay. So is this the period of Antichrist that is just ruled for three and a half years? That is just ruled only for thousand two sixty days. No. Then what is the truth about it? So we need to search from the Bible. For the Bible, Bible is his own dictionary. Okay. For a prophet, one day means how many years? See, we all know for Jesus, one day means how many years? How many years? Thousand years. Very good, sister. For Jesus, one day is thousand years. Okay. What about a prophet? For a prophet, actually, one day means one year. How much? One day means one year. Let us read Ezekiel 4.6. Ezekiel 4.6. Anil Budar, can you read Ezekiel 4.6? And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed the each day for a year. See, I have appointed the each day for a year. Each day for a year. That means 1260 days in prophetic language. It actually means 1260 years. Dear brethren, this is the period of Antichrist. 
Antichrist ruled in this world for a period of 1260 years, not 1260 days. Okay? These are 1260 symbolic days, which actually means 1260 years. Okay. Now, from when did it begin and when did it end? Now, how do we calculate that? In the Bible, there is a clue <clears throat> where read, Romy sister, please read Daniel 7 uh, 24. Daniel 7 24, sister. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. Ah, okay, sir. Thank you. So it says, this little horn, the papacy, when, as it is coming to power, the three horns were plucked out at him, sir. You see? You remember this one? This uh, little horn, if it has to come to power, these three horns has to fall. Now, if you see in the history, when these three horns fall, if you see, it actually fell in 539 AD. So, from 539 AD, if you calculate 1260 years, that is the period of the great Antichrist system. Now, okay. Calculate and tell me. From 539 plus 1260, how much it will come? Who tell me? Munna sister, uh, Romish to tell me. 1799. Very good. 1799. Good. See? 539 AD. From then, you see, 1260 years if you had, we will come to 1799. You know, what is the specialty of 539? That is the time when the mass was first conducted in the church. You see, <clears throat> daily, you see, <clears throat> the daily conduction of the mass actually also happened in 539 AD. You see, the three ons also fell during the same period. And that is the time that the papacy full came to civil and religious power. You see, both the powers was got to this Antichrist system during that year 539 AD. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> now it all ended in 1799. What happened in 1799 that the papacy power ended? You see, you all remember, huh? Uh, Napoleon Bonaparte. That's a typing mistake. Not Martin Luther. It's actually a Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon Bonaparte, you see, on August 29, 1799, he arrested the Pope. You see, he actually summoned the Pope and gave him an arrest warrant for which the Pope did not respond. Once the Pope did not respond, he immediately rushed to France. He arrested the Pope, Pope Pius VI, in front of everybody. Till then, the Pope claimed that in his left hand, there were the curses of hell. If anybody touches his left hand or if it just, you see, waves off his left hand, everybody will be gone to hell there itself. You see, and to, and to create this fear, what all torture they did in their torture room, those were painted actually, you see. Those were painted and brought and put forth in the, every street's corner. But everybody may see and fear, oh, this is hell. They were showing this is going to happen if you disobey God. You're going to suffer here also. And in hell next to heaven, God is going to prepare such a place which will be more worse than this one. This is how he caused the fear. But Napoleon Bonaparte was very brave. He came and arrested the Pope in front of everybody. You see, his hands were cuffed back. And uh, you see, he was totally taken to the entire France. Uh, you see, on the roads, uh, he was made to walk and everybody could see that the uh, Pope did not have power. So that is the time, dear brethren, <clears throat> everybody clearly realized that uh, Pope did not actually have the power which he actually claimed. So 1799, what happened? In the great French Revolution, the great Antichrist, the supreme civil religious power ended. 
This is given to us in Revelation 13 chapter also. So let us read Revelation 13, 1. Revelation 13, 1. Uh, who can read? Uh, uh, Kamal brother? Or Rosh sister? Are you there? Yes, brother. Uh, sister, Revelation 13, 1 and 2. <clears throat> and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of Bla Bla Blasphemy. Okay, anyway. Blasphemy. Yes, okay. Now read verse 2 also, sister, please. And the beast which I saw was like up to a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Okay, thank you, sir. Now, Revelation 13 chapter is actually a symbolic uh, representation of the great Antichrist system. The great Antichrist system is shown in a very symbolic way, in a beautiful way in Revelation 13 chapter. Here it says, he saw a beast coming out from the sea. And how was the beast to look at? The beast body was like a leopard, but the feet were like a feet of a bear. And how was the mouth? The mouth was like a lion. And who gave the power if you see it, brethren? The great red dragon gave the power and seat and authority. Okay. Now, did you observe <clears throat> this actually beast is like the four in one beast? Huh? Do you remember? Where did we did just study about this four beast? We just now studied about lion, the bear, the leopard, and the great dragon. Correct now? Where did we study? Daniel 7 chapter. So all the four beasts that was mentioned in Daniel 7 chapter is mentioned in Revelation 13 chapter. What does it mean? That means the great paper system had all the four qualities of this four universal empire. Therefore, beast means government. This was a very different government from all the other four beasts. You see, lion means Babylon, bear means Medo Persian Empire, and the leopard means the Grecian Empire, and the great dragon is the Roman Empire. So you see, so these three empires were there, but who gave the power, you see, the Rome. That means this papacy system had the quality of a leopard. Now what is the quality of a leopard? You see, that represents the Greece, the Grecians. Greeks were very famous for knowledge. That's what the Bible says. Huh? You see, the Greek seeks knowledge. Apostle Paul tells in Corinthians. Uh, you see, so the Greece Empire represents knowledge. <clears throat> and uh, how was the leopard? You see? The body full is spots, 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 spots. Now, what does it mean? Uh, they had so much of knowledge that uh, their churches are established all over the world. You go to any remote place in your world, any, any place, any country, even there one Roman Catholic church will be there. One church will be there. That means there, you see, the churches are established all over the body. They colonized it, brethren. So that is the leopard. You see, they were, they were very intelligent. That is the reason the little horn, you remember? They had eyes of a man. Eyes means what? Intelligence. They were very intelligent. See, everybody knows that what Pope did was wrong and what Pope is now doing is also wrong. But who can tell against him? You see, who can speak against him? Who can catch him red and red? Nobody. That is intelligence. Okay. Now the second, <clears throat> you see, the hands were like a hand of a bear. You see, the body was like a leopard, but that was the hands. It was like a bear. What is the quality of a bear? Bear has a firm grip. Once if it catches something, it doesn't leave. So similarly, once you are into the system, of the great antiquated system, you can never escape. That's the reason, have you ever seen 
Roman Catholics reading the Bible, Roman Catholics attending the Bible study. No, dear brethren, they won't attend at all because they're so much into that grip. It's very difficult for them to escape. That is the quality of a bear. If the papacy decides somebody to kill them or persecute them, they will do it. Nobody can stop it. That's the quality of the bear. The third, <clears throat> you see, huh? the lion, mouth of a lion. Why mouth of a lion means the lion roars so loudly, its roaring is heard for nearly two kilometers, it seems. And the lion's roar is so, you see, what do you say, mesmerizing that the prey automatically comes and falls in front of that lion because of fear. It will try to escape, but unfortunately, it will move towards the sound. It seems. You see, that is the quality of a roaring of a lion. The proclamation of papacy, the false doctrines which they proclaim that the soul doesn't die, it goes here and there, hell is a place of torment. The Lord Supper has to be taken whenever we want. You see, many other first year is Christmas, Christmas, all these things and all. Even today, the whole world believes that one, even, they, even if they know that this is false, that is the loud roaring of the lion. So nobody cares for it, dear brethren. This three in one quality beast who gave the power, Rome, if Rome wouldn't have given the power to the church, the Roman Catholic wouldn't have come to power. Now see what happened in verse 3. Revelation 1, 2 we read. Now let us see what happened to this beast. Revelation 13, 3. <clears throat> Revelation 13, 3. Sunita, sister, you're there? Sunita, sister? Uh, she's on the washroom. I will read, brother. Please. And and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. You see, one of his head was wounded, deadly wound unto death. A wound was such great that the beast should have died there only. But it lived, it seems. Now, what is this wound? This is the wound that was given by Napoleon Bonaparte. You see, Napoleon Bonaparte gave such a hit, uh, you see, and Martin Luther. You see, what happened? A great reformation. Entire Germany, all the Roman Catholic Church was smashed out. Uh, you see, the Pope was arrested, the great revelation. You see, Protestants formed. Uh, what happened? Uh, this wound was healed. Martin Luther's uh, re reformation and the protest uh, against the system, it ended. When... Until Martin Luther was there, it was successful. But once when Martin Luther died, all his followers segregated here and there. They formed various denominations. Calvin, Calvinist. You see, Miller, Second Adventist. You see, so many denominations were formed that were slowly huh? gone. Head was healed. The wound that was given, you see, by the sword, it was healed and it was cured. Hence, what happened? You know, huh? you know, the protestants who protested against the Roman Catholic and came out. After they came out, they also did the same mistake. They also followed the same doctrines, same evil doctrines, and same false doctrines, except one thing that they did not do idly worship. So, what happened? So the both became one. Only one difference between these two systems is that Protestants and the Roman Catholic is only one thing that they don't do idol worship. You see? So, <clears throat> what happened? Huh? Verse 4. Revelation 13, verse 4. <clears throat> Joel, brother, can you read? Ah, read. Gopal, brother, read, read. And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And verse 5 and 6, brother, also. Oh. And there was given unto him a mouth to speak in great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tab tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. 
You see, so it was given unto him 42 months. So before 42 months, that means before the papacy period ended, this is a great wound that was uh, there on head. It could not do anything because God had appointed a time for it. Now, okay. Now, read verse uh, 11, brother. Huh? Revelation 13, 11. Go, brother, read. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Okay. Now here you see, uh, this is all totally symbolic, and this will be heavy also. But just understand the gist of it, okay? Because we will see in detail way uh, in the coming days, okay? Lord willing. So here it says, another beast came out of the earth. But how was that beast? It was like a lamb. It had two horns, you see, like a lamb. Now, actually, lamb means who? Jesus, very docile, very humble, very polite. You know, which is this one, this lamb? This is the protection denomination. The Protestants, they believe in Jesus. They are not like the Roman Catholics, you see. They are very good, you see. They are very soft. But how do they speak? They speak like the dragon is himself. That means what? That means they all believe the same evil doctrine, which the Roman Catholics believe. You see, only one difference, idol worship is not. But everything is ditto, copy to copy. And what happened is himself? Continue verse 12, brother. Huh? <clears throat> and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them uh, which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. You see, and he exercised the same power of the first beast is himself. That means it is almost like the first beast who the Roman Catholic system. And uh, huh? verse 13, brother. Huh? And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Ah, you see, what does he do with himself? This uh, lamb-like beast only does great wonders, does great miracles in the sight of men. You see, that is the reason we tell that miracles what are done now today in the world, it is not what that was done by our Lord Jesus. Where were these miracles? Suddenly, how did it sprung up? It sprung up only when the Protestant denomination came out of. Satan to counterfeit this uh, revolt against the Roman Catholic system. He formed this uh, system in such a way that uh, all the fake miracles, uh, it actually happens. Uh, but these are not the three miracles which is done by the Lord. Uh, you said you've done the great miracles such that uh, if it were possible, deceive the very elect. Now what do, what do uh, this, uh, you see, uh, the coalition, what do they do? Read verse 14, brother. Huh? And deceived them that dwell on earth by the means of those miracles which he had powers to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which had the one wound by a sword and did. You see, uh, it says, uh, you see, these are deceiving the people by the miracles, isn't it? We can clearly see. That the whole world is deceived by the miracles. You see, they believe in Lord Jesus. Okay, good. But for what reason? Only because of miracles and benefit. Okay, now verse 15. Uh. And he had powers to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should, uh, should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So, <clears throat> Here uh, it says uh, that uh, he had the power to give life unto the image of the beast. Uh, you see, dear brethren, this image of the beast uh, is uh, uh, going to happen in the future where the evangelical alliance, uh, that means where the Protestants and the Roman Catholic systems are going to come together to persecute the saints and they will be made to worship this beast. Uh, remember in the days of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, we were compelled to fall before the idol. That will be the final collapse uh, and the final climax uh, in the church life. Uh, 
Now, what happens next uh, is very important. Verse 16. Mm. Continue with the verse 16. Mm. And he uh, causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Uh, that is the, uh, you see, thing that uh, they will cause uh, both uh, great, uh, small, rich and poor, bond and free, everybody to receive the mark on the right hand and the forehead. Now, what is that mark? Read verse 17. Uh. And that no man mighty might buy or sell, save he that he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. You see, and nobody is allowed to buy or sell in the market who doesn't have that mark at all. What is that mark? It clearly says in verse 17 that that is the name of the beast or the number of his name. Okay, now what is that number? What is that name? Verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. See, here is wisdom. Let him that had understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of the man, and his number is six hundred and sixty-six. <clears throat> you see, dear brother, this is the triple six number. From this verse only, they get the triple six. Everybody thinks that this is little triple six. Satan will come and put a little triple six on their head and their hand and who doesn't have the seal, they won't be allowed to trade in the market. So in the future, you won't even get food, grains and ration and all these things and all. Huh? Dear brethren, do you think the Satan is so foolish that uh, he will be worried about uh, little food? Uh? He is not worried about little food. Whether you take it or die, it doesn't matter. He is really worried only about the spiritual food, the enlightenment of your eyes. So this can't be a literal uh, triple six number. Because the verse itself gives us a clue how to calculate this number. It says, you see, here is wisdom. That means what? This is not a little statement. There is a wisdom. There is a secret in it. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast. So with your understanding, with your spiritual senses, we need to do what? Count the number of what? Count the number of the beast. What is this beast? That is the Revelation 13, 1 and 2. The great Antichrist beast. So this beast has got a number. Now what is this number? It says, it is the number of a man. Now, which day was man created? Who will tell me? <clears throat> God created six days and seventh day rested. Now, which was the day that man was created? Everybody are there. Sixth day. Very good. Sixth day. So that is the number of a man. At the end of the sixth day, man was created. So here it says 666. Now what is this number of a man? This is the man of sin. The great antichrist system. The great huh, mystery of iniquity. Now how do we calculate triple six? Huh? Where do we calculate? Where do we calculate? Read verse 17. It is given there. Uh, Gobal Buddha, read verse 17, Revelation 13, 17, read once. Uh. And, and that no man might be might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Ah, the name of the beast, the number of his name. That means his name is having a number. Brother, how do we calculate a number in the name? Is it possible to calculate a number in the name? Yes, it is possible. How? How you know? In the same Roman, you see, alphabets, we have numbers. How do we calculate? How do we see the name of the beast? What is his name of the beast? This beast has got what name? In which there is a number? You see, the great antiquary system the beast has various titles. Last week you studied now so many titles. Pope of Pope, uh, 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 <clears throat> Moses, uh, the Patriarch, Melchizedek, uh, the High Priest. So various titles are there. But uh, above all this title, there is one title in Latin, a very, very superior title. That title 
is even put on the crown of a pope and the enter of the city you see as soon as they enter the rome the vatican city the arch has this title and what is the title if you see that means the title is vicarius filii <clears throat> you see vicarvis filii that is the title that is there on the pope's crown and this name this is the name of the beast and this name has got numbers in it how do we calculate the numbers you see this is the number vicar vis filii actually you is not you is v okay vicar vis filii in uh, what do you say uh, in roman uh, numericals each and every alphabet has got a number i hope you all have studied in your school days also was it there in your schools brother there in nepal brothers sisters was it there in your schools roman numericals yes okay now let us see just remember what you studied in school is very simple vicarius filii v means what in roman numericals 5 very good 5 5 good i means 1 1 one. One. very good okay then c means what how much 100 very good 100 you see c means actually 100 ha uh, you can see my point now c means 100 a means nothing so zero r means nothing i means again 1 now u is actually v so v means how much v in roman numerical how much we just now saw no 5 5 yes means again nothing zero so vicar yes you see vicar yes means 112 fili now it let's come to f f means nothing is there zero i means 1 l means how much hmm 50 you see then again i 1 again one more i 1 so fili means total how much 53 last is d d e i d means how much roman numericals you know it is 500 e means 0 <clears throat> i means 1 so d means 501 so vicarius fili d Total, if you calculate, hundred and twelve plus fifty three plus five not one, how much you'll get it? How much you'll get? Sixty six. Yes. Six hundred sixty six. Yes, six hundred sixty six triple six. This is, you see, the number in the name in the title. <clears throat> Similarly, there are many many titles to pop up there. Dear brethren, if you calculate all the titles in the same way, you will get the same number triple six. Everybody, without even understanding the Bible, without even studying the Bible, will think it's a literal number. Where Satan will come and put it in his head. No, brethren, <clears throat> this is the symbolic number. Now, what do you mean by putting in the hand, putting a seal on the head? That means if we accept the doctrines of this system. it is like putting the seal in our head you see they would have sealed so much in their head that for some people even if you tell the truth they won't listen why their head is sealed with what false doctrines it is imprinted in their mind dear brethren this doctrines has to be taken out from their mind we need to take all the evil doctrines the false doctrines what all we studied you see before coming to the truth we need to forget it this seal if it is there in our mind we can't be of the little flock this has to be taken that is the seal you know satan today calls every question and put the seal everybody wherever you go the same doctrine hell even hell even hell even is this the same thing the bible says every religion says the same thing what is the special of the bible you see everything is same believe in jesus you shall be saved or else you will go to hell are in 66 books god doesn't have any planet ala 
Oh, why did he send Jesus? What is the plan of God? This is the false doctrine of triple six. And uh, <clears throat> putting the triple six in the hand means what? Contributing for this evil systems, for these false churches. Uh, brother, uh, I will come for the class. But uh, my pastor is there, brother. I need to give it to him. Monthly, monthly contribution, tithes. If you give a little bit, one paisa also, it is putting the triple six in your hand. Dear brethren, this is the meaning. And those who have this number, only they can sell, only they can purchase, means what? Only they can teach. You see? Hence, we had the first public meeting in Nepal. No? We called everybody. So many pastors also came. No? Huh? They all said it's very good, very good, very good. But last, when we said the truth about the ransom, huh, what did they do? They all went off. Because only those who have that seal are allowed to transact. Give food, purchase food. Spiritual food. If you don't have the seal, if you don't believe the doctrine, you're not allowed to preach. You're not allowed to give food for the Christians also. You know, what is the specialty? God says, if somebody has to be of the lakh and 44,000, this seal should not be there in the head or in their hand. Read Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. <clears throat> Joel, brother, please read. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the soul of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Ah, you see, those were beheaded for Christ's sake. Those who did not worship the beast, neither his image, neither has received his mark upon their forehead. They never acknowledged his first doctrine. They never supported this evil system, did not have a seal number on their hand. Only they can live and reign with Christ a thousand years. Dear brethren, by any way, if we have these false things a little bit also, you see, this is like putting a seal ourselves on our head, on our hand. This one is not sufficient. <clears throat> we can't reign with Christ, dear brethren. God is not calling the Christians to heaven just to sit and enjoy your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, holy, holy. No, 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 no. God is calling the Christians to heaven for a purpose, to rule with him for a thousand years. Thousand years, lot of work just to be done, dear brethren, by the church. You see? Now, what is the seal that should be there in their mind? Read. Revelation 14.1. Buna sister, read. Revelation 14.1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their forehead. Ah, I saw on the Mount Sion, like and forty four thousand standing whose name is on their forehead, the Father's name. Who is our Father? Almighty God. Almighty God's name is what? You see, not literal name to be written on the head. His character should be there in our mind. Dear brethren, you see, lakh and 44,000, you see, they should be having the character of God. Only those people can rule with Christ. Dear brethren, so this is about the great Antichrist system. <clears throat> so, Antichrist system means not only the Roman Catholic system, it also signifies <coughs> the entire Protestant denomination. First, primarily it is a Roman Catholic. Next, it also includes the lamb with a horn speaking like a great dragon. The great Protestant denomination also. So, dear brethren, so please go through the notes about the Antichrist. Any doubts, any questions you have, you can freely ask. Anybody has got any questions, any doubts? Anil brother, Sunita sister, any questions? No, brother. 
ओके जॉयल ब्रदर एनी क्वेश्चन एनी डाउट नो ब्रदर मुन्ना सिस्टर नो ब्रदर ओके रोमी सिस्टर अमर ब्रदर नो क्वेश्चन ब्रदर ओके रोशनी सिस्टर कमल ब्रदर एनी डाउट एनी क्वेश्चन ओके ओके देन विल फिनिश विथ अ वर्ड ऑफ प्रेयर गोपाल ब्रदर विल बी रिवाइजिंग दिस सैटर्डे सो एनी डाउट्स आफ्टर दैट आल्सो यू कैन आस्क आई विल बी शेयरिंग द नोट्स आल्सो इन द ग्रुप